good evening and welcome to another Spirit Life broadcast. I'm Pastor Ken, and we're just so delighted that you've joined in with us this evening. Come on, let's say Romans 8 and 2 together. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Spirit life, abundant life, Zoe life, the God kind of life, amen. The life that Jesus died for is the life we're always striving for. And the law of the spirit of life, that law is in you. Amen. It's working in you, both to will and to do of its good pleasure. Amen. That law is in the person of Jesus Christ. Christ in you, your hope of glory, and it's working in you, making you free from the law of of sin and of death. You know, uh, Jesus said, and you know, sometimes we hear scriptures and we almost get too familiar with them and we don't get the essence of their meaning. You know, Jesus said, I came that you might have a life. Now we understand you have to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and he will uh, take us out of the kingdom of darkness into his own kingdom. Amen. And of course, when we accept Jesus Christ, we, we confess with our mouth, he is Lord of all. We believe with our heart, God raised him from the dead, that God raised him out of the place of death and damnation. That's hell. And uh, the word of God says forever we're saved. Forever we have eternal life because eternal life is in Jesus. But Jesus says I came that you might live. I came that you might live. Now, of course, you have to make the, the decision of quality to come into the kingdom of God. But Jesus said, I came that you might have life. Amen. In abundance to the full until it overflows. So we understand God wants us to live this life. Amen. Amen and to live it in an abundance. And when people see you and I, they will see a quality life. They will see a life uh, that they would want to emulate, a life that they would desire to have. And so let's receive uh, our communion. Of course, we always take the meal that heals. Amen. It is a part of our uh, culture here at Spirit Life Ministries, and uh, we we love to partake of it because we understand uh, what it has been designed to do. The communion table has been designed to bring healing uh, to our mortal bodies. It's been designed to bring uh, uh, life and enhancement to our physical mortal bodies. And Jesus said, as often uh, as you do this, uh, through the writings of the Apostle Paul, he said, as often as you do this, you do show the death, the burial, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ until he comes back. And so we understand uh, the word show means to confirm, to announce, to proclaim. Amen. We're confirming what Jesus did on the cross. He took our sickness and he gave us his healing. We're confirming what Jesus did on the cross. He took our darkness and he gave us his light. We are confirming what Jesus did on the cross. Amen. He took our poverty and he gave us his health. Amen. His wealth. And so we confirm what Jesus has already done. And we're so glad about it. By the stripes of Jesus, you and I are healed. We are well. We are sound. Let's partake together of the bread first. And now let's partake of the cup. Jeremiah 33 and 6. Behold, I bring it health and cure, and I will cure them and reveal unto them 
the abundance of peace and truth. You know, God wants you well. Amen. In this season where we've experienced uh, so much death in this country, uh, unfortunately, so many good people uh, have uh, gotten sick. And uh, unfortunately, they have gone on into eternity. Uh, but we who are alive and remain, uh, I believe the Lord wants us to build our faith up. Amen. Get in faith. Amen. Walk in faith. Live in faith. Stay in faith. Amen. For the just shall live by faith. Meaning the justified. Those who have been declared righteous in and through the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The word of God says, for the just shall live by faith. Amen. Uh, Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4. Uh, Romans 10 and 17, Galatians 3 and 11, Hebrews 10 and 38, all declare that the justified, those who've been declared righteous through the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, all those who've been justified, amen, they live by faith. And we said that a uh, faith, amen, is taking God at his word. Amen. Faith takes God at his word. Faith feeds off the word of God. And we said God has given unto us the written word so we might know the living word, Jesus. Jesus is the living word. John 1 and 14 uh, declares the word was made flesh. John said, and it dwelt among us. He walked among us. He talked among us. He lived among us. And he said, uh, we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten son of the father, full of grace and truth. And we understand one of the meanings for that word glory means manifested word. When God manifests his word, when the promises come to pass in your life, it is a glory. It is a glory, a glory, a manifestation of God's glory in your life. And that's what we want. We want the glory of the Lord, amen, to manifest in our lives. And so we are so grateful that uh, Jesus is Lord, amen, and he has come to bring forth manifestation, amen, of his word in our lives. Uh, let's go over here to Matthew chapter 8 and um, we just want to look here for a few minutes on the willingness of Jesus to heal you. The willingness of Jesus. You know, uh, our Father is so compassionate. He's so loving. He is so kind. He is so merciful uh, that uh, it says in Psalms 103 and verse 10, uh, he has not rewarded us. Uh, he has not uh, rewarded us according to our sins. Um, let me say that right. It says he has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. He has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Amen. He is so willing to heal. He is so willing to bring about the manifestation of his healing power in your life. Amen. He's not dealt with us after our sins. He's not rewarded us according to our iniquities. Amen. So if you're thinking tonight, well, you know, I would, you know, Listen to what Pastor Gaines is saying, and I. But you know what? I, I'm I'm trapped in something. I'm involved in something. I know the Lord's not going to heal me. Uh, don't let the enemy put that on you. Condemnation kills. Condemnation is of the devil. He's the accuser of the brethren. That's the number one. That's the number one operation of the netherworld. That's the number one operation of Satan himself and all of his cohorts. 
He wants to accuse you. He wants to condemn you. He wants to make you feel like uh, there's something in your life that 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 God will not uh, pass over that's going to keep you in uh, the hole uh, of healing, uh, the, the, the basement, the cell, the chambers, the dungeons of healing. But that's not so. Amen. The word of God is so clear that our God is disposed to favors. Amen. He's full of compassion. His, his mercy is everlasting. His truth endures throughout all the generations of humanity. He wants you well. He wants you whole. And the word of God is very clear. Healing is the children's bread. Now, uh, Matthew chapter 8, I just want to show you a couple instances of God's willingness to heal in the person of Jesus Christ. It says in Matthew chapter 8, verse 1, uh, when he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And uh, uh, behold, a leopard came and worshiped, worshiped him, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. Jesus put forth his hand, and he touched the leopard and said unto him, I will be thou clean. And it says, immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Jesus said unto him, see that you tell no man, but go your way, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Amen. The leopard comes up to Jesus and, uh, you know, he's really in a forbidden place. You were not allowed to be walking through society as a leper. It was a very contagious uh, disease and um, it, it, it was very harmful to humanity. And so uh, he was uh, going against the law to be out in public. But I guess he just sneaks up to Jesus and he's just, he's taking his chances and he says, Lord, if you're willing, I've heard about you. I've heard about your work. He might have even seen people who had been healed. And he says, but if you're willing, I know the power. I know the ability is there. But if you're willing, if you are willing, you can make me clean. You can make me whole. You can make me well. You can, you can take this sickness, this disease from out of my body. And Jesus is so cool about it. He just says, I will, you know. And it says in, in, in the book of Mark, it says he put his hand on him and he touched him. And he said, I will be thou made whole or be clean. Amen. And it says the leprosy immediately left his body. Amen. Uh, God is willing to heal you even if you feel like you're in a dark place. Even if you feel like it's against all logic. Your doctor told you it's incurable. You know, you've had uh, one MRI after another x-ray after another MRI, and, and it's, it's, it's been confirmed through medical science uh, that this sickness, this disease will not go away. But thank God, amen, there's nothing impossible with our God, amen. Matthew 19 and 26, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. But with man, this is impossible. With medical science, this is impossible. We have done all we can. But with God, all things are possible. With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things. But with man, but with God, but with man, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So what are we going to do? We're going to get over here with God. Amen. We're going to put our eyes on the word. We're going to put our ears on the word. We're going to say what God has said. Amen. We're going to flood the gates to the heart with the word of God. Amen. Because with man, it's impossible. 
But with God, all things are possible to him that believes. Amen? Another. Uh, we're in the book of, of Matthew. Matthew chapter 8. It's, it's filled with healing. And uh, it says in verse 5, Jesus uh, entered into Capernaum. And there he came across a centurion, uh, saying unto him, uh, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And uh, he tells Jesus, I have one of my servants. And uh, basically he's telling Jesus this. I've got a servant at home, but he's like my family. And uh, not only is he sick, he is grievously tormented. That means he's probably, uh, oh, he's, 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 he's noisy. He can't take the pain. Jesus said, uh, I'll come and heal him. Oh, we said, look, here it is again. He tells the leopard, I will. The centurion, he's not even uh, within the, the nation of Israel. He's, 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 he's a Gentile. He didn't even come at his ministry was for the lost house of Israel. And this Gentile man comes because he recognizes his power. And he says, he says, uh, I got a servant at my house. He's like my family. He says, and he's grievously tormented. I believe he told Jesus that because he knew the sensitivity that Jesus has for those who are sick and hurting. And so he says, he is grievously tormented. Jesus says in verse 7, I'll come and heal him. How about that? And this is what the centurion says. He says, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. He says, Lord, we, mm -mm. I know you are the Holy One of Israel. You know, I, I, I know your works. I, 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 heard about your ways and how you work. So I'm not worthy for you to come to, to come under my roof. He says, but speak the word only and my servant will be healed. He says, Jesus, you don't got to come lay your hands on him. You, none of that. Just stand where you are and say what you say and do what you do and my servant will get up and walk. He says, for I'm a man under authority I have soldiers under me, and I say to this man, go, and he goes. To another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he'll do it. He says, I'm a man under authority. He says, and, you know, I'll tell one soldier, go this way. You know, another soldier, go this way. He says, I have servants at home. I tell them, do this and do that. He says, and it'll get done. He says, but I can see that. You have a power that's over everything. And he's right. Jesus is the name that is above every name. There's no other name given whereby men must be saved. That's the name of Jesus. He's the savior. He's the healer. He's the sustainer of everything that's good and perfect and wholesome, and blessed. Amen. It's in his name. And so he, he says, uh, he says, uh, just say the word. And Jesus, Jesus is marveling. Jesus says, wow. He says, I've not seen so great faith. No, not in Israel, not in the church folk. Jesus says, I haven't seen this kind of faith in the folk that go to church every week. In the people that profess to be mine. And then he says uh, to the centurion, go thy way. Go on now. As you have believed, so be it done unto you. He says, as you have believed, be it done unto you. It's a done deal, brother. But you made it happen. You believed on me and your belief in me boomeranged and went back to whatever you need. Amen?
When you believe on Jesus, wonderful things are going to happen. Now, uh, it says in verse 14, in verse 14, uh, this is the third healing now in, in, in Matthew chapter 8. It says, Jesus, go, Jesus goes to Peter's house. And uh, Peter's mother-in-law, uh, she's laid on the couch and uh, she's sick of a fever. And I love this. I love this one. It says, Jesus just touched her hand. He gave her a low five. I mean, she, she couldn't get it up. She just put her hand out there. Pop! Jesus slaps her hand and the fever left her. And it says she rose up and started ministering. I believe she rose up and started cooking. Hey, man. She said, good God Almighty. Jesus, he just gave me a low five. Amen. The fever left my body. The word, the word of God says it's a great fever. So it's high. And they've been trying to, you know, get this fever down all day. Jesus walks in the house, gives her a low five. Amen. And boom, the fever's gone. Amen. She goes to the kitchen, feeling dandy. And that's the way our God works. Amen. He is compassionate. He's full of favor towards you. And he wills to heal you. Do not let the enemy or anyone else speak into your heart the will of God. The will of God is that you profit and that you be in it. The will of God is that you see Jesus in the written word. And that you take him at his word and allow the spirit life of his divine spirit to have its way in you. Let this mind be in you. God's will is to heal me. No matter how long I've been hurt, no matter how long I've been in pain, no matter how long I've been in trouble, no matter how long I've been in the struggle, it's God's will to heal me. Look yourself in the mirror and say, it is God's will to heal me, and it is my time, and it is my season, and it is my time, and I will to be healed. I'm going to take my bed up and walk because it's God's will. That I would profit, prosper, and be in health. Healing is the children's bread. It is for you. Amen. We love you so very much. Again, this Sunday at 10 a.m., we'll be out in the parking lot. Amen. Church unusual. You know, this is COVID church. We're doing the best we can uh, for where we are. Uh, but come on over and join us. Amen. There's been a feast of the Lord going on. Amen. And we're so very, very glad. Amen. For this season. Amen. And so you get your faith up. Amen. Get in the word. Stay in the word. Amen. The word of God will cause you to agree with the will of God. John 15, 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. Amen. Ask what you will. Amen. My word is my will. Find what you need in the word. It'll be done unto you. This is Pastor Ken saying we love you so very much. Have a wonderful evening. And remember, the law of the spirit of life. The law of life is in you. Amen. And it's freeing you today. It's healing you today from the jaws, from the clutches of the law of sin and death. Amen. You're alive tonight in the spirit life of almighty God. You're God's champion. Amen. And you are going forth like never before in the dominion and in the power of the spirit of Christ. Amen. Lord bless you. Have a wonderful evening.